Hello, everybody. Welcome to Making It Simple. Pastor Andy here. Hope you're doing great on this Tuesday morning. I uh, had a chance to be here at home this morning doing a little work. And uh, so I'm going to come to you today uh, from right here in my kitchen. Uh, just after having a hot cup of coffee and getting the day going. So I was thinking and studying this morning. I love songs and the story behind how they're written and, and some of the meanings and stuff. And most who know me personally know that I'm a, a really big Elvis fan, always have been, uh, most likely always will be. There's just quality there. Uh, Elvis's last gospel album back in, oh, it was around 1976. It was called He Touched Me. And then there's some wonderful, wonderful songs on there that just speak volumes. But as I was sitting here this morning and looking out at, the, at just the beauty that's around me, one of the songs came to my mind, and it's called Seeing is Believing. And there's a part in that song, and it's, of course, the chorus part, and it said, seeing, seeing, seeing is believing. And I see him everywhere, in the mountains, in the valleys. Oh, I know my God is there. Friends, you know, as, we, as we're going through this journey, in particular, we're studying the book of John. But one of the keys, one of the goals of my doing this program that I call Making It Simple is to introduce you and anybody who listens for that fact to the person of Christ. Because someone took time 23 years ago to introduce him to me. Yeah, I'd heard about him as a kid and, you know, uh, spent time going to church and all this other stuff, but I never really knew him. I just knew about him. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. You know, we all have our journey that we've walked down. All of us can look back and we, you know, can have regrets and we can have, you know, I wish I could go back and fix it and all those other stuff. But friends, we can't live in that. We can't. We've got to move forward. We ask God to forgive us. We ask those that have wronged us. Uh, we forgive them. Those that we have wronged, we ask them to forgive us and we move on. Uh, we can't live in that. There's Life is too short. As I shared with you yesterday, my sister just passed away. She was only 46 years old. Life's too short to live in anger and hate and fear and all the things that are promoted in our world today. Get your heart right with Jesus. That is not a religious statement, and that is not a preacher preaching at you. This is a follower and believer of Christ who I have come to love, who I know, just as that song would say, my God is there. There's not a doubt in my mind. None whatsoever. I want to try to finish today, if we can, chapter 1. I want to read that to you right now, the remainder of what we've got left. And then let's go back and talk about that a little bit, how it applies to us right now. We're at verse 47 of chapter 1, and it says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him. And he said, and remember, because Nathanael did not believe that anything good could come out of Nazareth. So he was in question about the legitimacy of, of Philip's claim that this is the one. Here's the guy. We've got him. We found him. He was, he was in question about that. Jesus saw him coming and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. I'll explain that in a minute. Nathaniel said to him, Where do you know me from? How do you know me? Jesus answered and said unto him, before Philip called you, in other words, before Philip even talked to you about me, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. There's a specific time and location. How did he know that? This stopped Nathaniel in his tracks. And he said unto Jesus, Rabbi, that's a term of respect, of teacher, of leader. He said, you are the son of God, seeing is believing. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto you, I saw you under a fig tree causes you to believe. 
In other words, something so simple, it only took that one word, that one proclamation to you of something that I know about you that caused you to believe. He said, oh, you shall see much greater things in these. Oh, my goodness. Friends, that walk, that relationship with Christ opens doors that only he can open. And the last verse, verse 51, and he said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The way this chapter ends is such a beautiful picture of the understanding of Jesus. You see, he saw Nathaniel. Nathaniel, it says, was coming to him. So Nathaniel had an interest. He had a curiosity, but he had a question. He wanted it settled. And he was willing to go and do that. He was bold enough to say, I don't know. Many people today say to me, they say, Pastor, I don't know. I don't understand. One of the things that I've had to learn to do in the humbling that I've come to have over the last several years is to be able to give that answer. I don't know. Because that is an admission of truth. That is not a denial of something in this particular case. Certainly that phrase can be used as that. But that's not what was going on here. There was a willingness there to understand and learn but there was also a willingness to say, I don't know. I mean, could anything good come out of Nazareth? I want to go find out. I'm going to go ask him. And it says that Jesus saw him coming and he says, behold, it just simply means look. Look who's coming. Here comes Nathaniel, an Israelite indeed. In other words, a true one, a real one. What did that mean? He said, in him is no guile. So in other words, he was being, he, he was, he was acknowledging his his nationality and, and, and culture and all those other things. He's saying this is this is the real thing here. But when he uses that phrase guile, now that is certainly not a word that all of us, probably none of us use, to be quite frank about it. Uh, in this particular translation, you know, that word is used. I'm sure there's other words used in others. And I've got, you know, four Bibles here around in this different area where I could pick from. But I just just if we understand that, what he's talking about here is He's not saying here's someone who's perfect. He's not saying here's someone who has never done wrong. He's not saying here's someone who's never sinned, if we want to use that word. He's saying there's just not a there's not a false falsehood about him. He's not he doesn't have any deceit about him. He's being honest. He wants to know. When he asked his question, could anything good come out of Nazareth? He wasn't being cruel. He wasn't being, you know, uh anything. He was just being honest because that had been the long-standing reputation. Again, as I shared with you yesterday, from a cultural point of view, people ask that question because it was notable that that area had not always produced the highest quality of characters. So he was asking a question from the sincerity of his heart, not in a negative or ugly way. He wasn't looking down upon Jesus. He just said, is this possible because you are associating him with a known area that's not so great? So Jesus said, here's the real deal. Here's the real deal. He didn't have anything. He's not spewing anything guile. He's not spewing you know, you know, anything negative or rotten out of his mouth. He doesn't have a rotten heart. He's just being honest. Nathaniel wanted to know. He wanted to know. And Jesus said, I've known you since seeing you standing under the fig tree. Now he really has some questions. He's like, oh my, I mean, wait a minute. I've got a question for you. Because I want to, I want to affirm who you are. And now you're telling me about me. How do you know that? How is that even possible? How do you, how do you know me? See, friends, the Bible tells us that God knows your name. I want you to think about that for a minute. It said he knows the numbers of hair on your head. Now, yes, I know that makes me very easy to identify, right? Okay, we got all the ball jokes. Here, I want us to understand God knows 
who you are. And he knows what you're doing. Now, that is not to strike fear upon you or shame or guilt. It's a matter of knowing God, the creator of all. I see him in the mountains. I see him in the valleys. This I know my God is everywhere. When we see that, when we understand that, then we realize, we realize something important. We should want to get to know who that is. Because if you know me, as Philip or Nathaniel here was finding out, he was saying, you, you, you know me, then equally we should want to know him. Correct? That, then that should be how that process goes. That should be how that works. And so Jesus said, here it is. I knew you from the time that I saw you under the fig tree. Now imagine this, someone you just met, they just make a very personal statement about you. You'd want to know why, and you'd want to know how they knew that, right? Now today, of course, we got all kinds of different avenues where people are snooping around and trying to check on people about different stuff. But this was something from the heart. The Holy Spirit revealed this to Jesus and so that he could answer Nathaniel, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip ever told you about me. This was specific. This was location and time. And so Nathaniel immediately, he looked at him and he realized what Philip had told him was right. Here is the one. Here is the one. And he turns to him and he says, Rabbi, teacher, master, you are the one. You are the one that I was told about. You are the son of God. You are the king. You, you, you are the one we have waited for. In an instant, we're told, he believed. The light was on. Why? Because Jesus was real. Not just because he was standing in front of him. It was his character. It was his uh, just divine nature that just poured out. It was so clear. In other words, Nathaniel's eyes were open. And Jesus replied and he says, so if, if me just telling you, as I was reading that passage, he said, if me just telling you that I saw you in the fig tree, if that caused you to believe, well, hold on to your hat, buddy, because you've seen nothing yet. You see, friends, with Jesus, there's always more. Even if we go back to the Old Testament in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, one of my favorite verses in the entirety of the Bible, he says, call unto me. That's our prayer life. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you things you've never known. Pastor Andy translate, translation, trust me and I'll blow your mind. I'll show you things you would never, ever believe on your own. Seeing is believing. And I see him everywhere. Before it's all over, Jesus let Nathaniel know, you're going to see heaven open. You're going to see angels coming back and forth upon me, the son of man. You will never have, he was speaking of the ascension, which that's another thing later we'll talk about after the crucifixion. But in other words, what he was telling him is you will never have another reason to doubt that everything I'm telling you is real. This, friends, has been the point of me starting making it simple. It's very, very easy to deny things in this world today. Very easy. Because, in fact, most things that we see are not true. And I'm not saying that to make any conspiratorial statements or anything else. It's just fact. Most things that we're told today are just not true. However, one of the purposes behind me starting this, I want to wrap this up, making it simple, was to cause one that would listen, not just to me. In fact, I, I, I want to be just a mere minor, tiny, minute little part of this. I want you to hear him. I want you to go back and read these passages along with me. I want you to go back and hear what he is saying and realize that just as he told Nathaniel, if you believe based on a little thing, hold on, because you're going to see some 
awesome things. Friends, this is about developing a relationship with Jesus because I know I don't just I don't just accept it. I absolutely know it will change your life. One day I'm going to share my story with you and how this all happened. And I thank God that I'm not who I used to be, but I thank him even more that I'm not yet who I'm going to be. Every day gets better. Every day. There's a great, great, great song. It says, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Friends, that's what this whole thing is all about. I want to thank you for sharing a little bit of your day with me. I want to challenge you to go back and listen to these things. All these lessons are here. They're archived. All you got to do is look them back up and pull them up. And, and again, it's not because I'm any type of great teacher or orator or anything else. I just know God has given me this message to give to you. Because we need this in our world today. We are so ensnared and entrapped and encamped and everything else with ugliness and hatred and negativity and all the other things. We need the answer. We've got it. And his name is Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your day. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow and the next day and the next day as the Lord so tarries. So may you have a blessed day and I'll see you soon.